Hi everybody, um, I thought we would do a little video on how to make a, a spinner by hand. Um, I make all my own blues and tie all my own flies and, and making making spinners, in this case uh, it's going to be a flying sea. Um, it's, it's a fun thing to do and you can get quite creative and quite inventive with it and without a doubt you can make a far better quality of lure than you can buy uh, most of the the, the flying seas that you you see in shops are of very very poor quality um, and you know very very poorly made and um, what we're going to make here is going to be something really a bit um, a bit neater than, than anything you can buy it's going to turn out something like like that nice neat short tails Nice, uh, nice profile. So that's what we're going for. Um, and this is going to be. This is a small one. Um, this is well. I've, I've, I've for this one. I've repurposed a size three MEP blade. Um, and MEP blades are always good if you can get them because they spin very well. They're they're quite heavy for their size. They're nice and thick, and they spin very well. So uh, I've, I've also got for the one I'm going to make. Um, it's also a MEP blade. It's a it's a MEP flying sea blade that I have I have found. Uh, so when I find spinners, I rarely I'll rarely use that spinner, but I'll always keep to I'll always keep them and and usually cut them up and, and get some good components out of them. Sometimes you get a good lead or a good blade, some nice beads, things like that. So tools I'm going to use. Um, I've got two pairs of scissors. I've got a big pair here. This pair of scissors gets kept exclusively for cutting rubber bodies. Um, they're Fiskar scissors. They're very, very sharp. Great scissors. Don't get used for anything else. Um, I've also got a pair of fly tying scissors, fine point fly tying scissors, which I may not need to use, but they can be used to, to just adjust the body a little bit with a finer cut if you if you don't get the, the initial cut quite right, which uh, which is quite common. Um, wire cutters, round nose pliers, very important. The pliers have to be round nosed um, because what I'm going to do here is use is form, form all the, the loops and the bends in the wire by hand. I'm not going to use a wire forming tool, which um, which a lot of people use. Uh, they, they give you a nice a nice kind of bend in your wire as well, but I find them a bit more complicated to use. Uh, I, I prefer to just do it by hand. Uh, components wise, I've got a small treble. That's a, a VMC spark point. That's a good, a really good hook. Um, and that's probably a size ten. I think size, size yeah, I think it's size ten. Uh, a few beads, clevis pin, small gold blade, very small lead. The body itself and our our wire shaft. You can buy these preformed as well, but I'm going to show you how to how to form the loops in the wire. It's quite easily done. Uh, I've also got some sellotape, which I'm going to use when I'm cutting the body, you'll see that shortly. And in this little tub here, I've got some silicon oil, which I'm going to use to, to lubricate the lead before I slide into the body. Okay, so I'm going to try and turn this camera around and hope that you can hope that you can see what you need to see. So, I'm going to start with my round nose pliers and my, my wire shaft here. I'm going to come two or three centimetres bit more than that maybe up from the from one end of the, the, the wire shaft and then I'm going to grip them nice and tightly in the round nose pliers about halfway up the, the, the nose of the pliers and I'm going to base put that put that on my finger as a base then I'm going to put my thumb on the lower piece of the wire and I'm going to put a 90 degree bend into the wire like that then still holding this very tightly I'm going to take the the shorter piece of the wire and I'm going to bend it the other way around the other side. Now once I get to there, I'm then going to kind of squeeze them together a little bit and that's going to give us that really nice shape there. And that's where the hook's going to go. So I'm going to immediately slide the hook onto that tag end of wire and get it nestling in that little bend and then come back in with the pliers. Now this is a point where you have to be careful. I've never done it, but this is a point where you could hook yourself if you if you, if your hand slipped. So you need to hold that really really tightly in the pliers and be very deliberate with your your the movement of your free hand. Which I'm then going to take this tag end and wrap it over the top of the pliers once more, and then snug it down. 
so that I've got a roughly 90 degree bend and a loop formed. And then we're going to make our barrel roll. So you're holding that wire tag quite close to the base. You don't want to be holding it up here, otherwise you get a loose, a loose roll on it. You want this nice and tight, so you hold it nice and close to the base and put the pressure on from the base side of it. And two or three turns, making sure they're just touching is plenty. And that's a nice round loop and a neat, a neat twist. Now a couple of turns I say is plenty. And I'm going to come in with my wire cutters and just snip that point off. Very important also to hold that tag end with the round nose pliers while you cut it because they do tend to fly off. Snip that and put it in, in the bin. So there's our hook on. We've got a little tag end here which I'm just going to try and snug down with the around those pliers. Now sometimes it can be really difficult to do that. It doesn't matter so much for the side that the end is going inside the body, that's going to be covered anyway. Um, and we'll come to the, the the head a little bit later, but it can be troublesome to get this done. Sometimes you just need to keep working at it until you you kind of get the, the pliers to bite onto it. There may be a better way of doing this, but I haven't yet found it. There we go, that's that, that bit down there, and that's just tucked that wire end in a little bit. So it just makes it a wee bit neater. It's nice and flush now. So that's the that's the the shaft of the lure basically made. So obviously we're going to slide everything down onto there. So I'm going to put that aside for now. And then I'm going to come to my body. Now, there's different ways you can cut these. Um, the way I do it is using sellotape, which is going to be quite possibly quite difficult for you to see, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll do what I do and then I'll hold it up for you to see. So I'm going to take a small piece of sellotape, a few inches long, and I'm going to lay the tail end of the body down onto that. I'm then going to take another piece the same length and sandwich the body into it and press it down nice and tight. hoping to get it to sit flat. Now you won't always get it to sit flat, particularly with bigger um, bigger sizes of, of the, the, the silicon bodies. You won't always get them to sit flat, but these small ones are pretty good. So I'm just going to take the tag end off the sellotape and then I'll show you what we have here. So we've got a rubber body sandwich, the tail end of which is sandwiched between two layers of sellotape and it's sitting mostly pretty flat and what that does is it makes it much much easier to cut uh, a neat tail with the scissors okay so take my scissors and hope that you can see this I'm going to start at the base and I'm going to cut diagonally up towards the neck the length uh, I want the tail try and get start your cut as much in the middle as you can and then also try and do it in as smooth a motion as you can and it just makes it a bit neater. So that's one side and what I want to do is repeat it on the opposite side and you won't always get this as neat as you want it, you just have to do the best that you can. That's quite a good tail I think. So you can see that's nice pointed shape. Just take the tape off and then Yeah, that's a nice one. That's worked nicely. This uh, particular body has a little bit of a blemish on, on there. That's showing the, the inside colour on the outside there, but it doesn't really matter. It's not going to matter much at all. Um, sometimes what you'll find is that if you come slightly too slightly longer on one side of your cut than on the other, you'll have it slightly uneven, but that's not a problem. That's where I would use these scissors, uh, the, the fly tying scissors, and what, all you would do there is then flatten the body out, and on the side that was slightly uneven, you would just cut out a tiny little kerf to match the to match the sides up but that's that's pretty well spot on quite pleased with that one so all I need to do now is cut the the head off this now some people do this by just putting a hole in there and then having a kind of a rounded head on the spinner there's nothing wrong with that at all but the way I've always done it is just 
is to cut that off. And again, whenever you're cutting this stuff, try and do it as smoothly and as quickly as you can. And I'm going to cut this. I'm not going to cut this far down. I'm going to cut it as close to the tip as I can because that gives you room to, to, to adjust and maneuver if need be. So one quick, swift cut. And that will give you the neatest possible finish on it. And again, if you've got a wee bit not quite right, you can just come in with the small scissors and trim it off. So that's our body cut. What we need to do now is get our lead inside there. So... I'm going to take the, the lid off my silicon oil, which is almost finished, but there's enough in it, it goes a long way. And then just dip one end of the lead very slightly into it and feed it into the into the top of the the body. Sometimes it can help to kind of use your use your shirt to get a or a piece of cloth to get more leverage on that. There's my left hand is sweating and it's slippery. A bit more silicon oil there wouldn't have done me any harm. So once that's in, what I want to do is then size up my my body in relation to the the, the shaft of the lure. So what I'm going to do is just Feed this up from the tail side through the central hole in the lead, which can be a bit difficult to find sometimes. Sometimes you need to just clear it out a little bit. There we go. Now that at the moment that's that's too that body's too long for the for the size of everything else. See, that's giving you horrible curled up effect. Now the way to fix that is to just bring your lead further down the body and you just squeeze it down from the outside and just feed it along as gently as you can and get it to the point at which the hoop's going to sit best. It's still a little bit far up so a wee bit more adjustment on that. And what you're looking for is to get to a point roughly like that where the the body and the hook are going to sit together at a level which spreads those tails out nicely and gives you a nice straight straight body you can see that little lump in there that's just the 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 eye that was formed in the wire that's not a problem. But that's sitting quite nicely. Those tails are spread out nicely. They're not too long, they're not too short. That's about right. Okay, so I'm going to then take the wire back out. And that top section there, where we squeeze the lead down to, that's going to get cut off. And again, nice smooth cut. And just clean it up a little bit. It's the flat tank scissors. So that's our body formed. So we're going to go back in with the wire now that we've got our length. I'm hoping that you can see this. And then we're going to start decorating. So on top of that, I'm going to put a single brass kind of cone-headed bead. You can use teardrop beads as well, but these these small ones, I like these cone-headed beads, they sit really nicely on top of the on top of the body, like that. Then I always put, you don't have to, but I always put a, a small plastic or or metal bead on top of that cone head as well, just to act as a ball bearing, and that I find helps the blade spin all the better. So then put our blade on our clevis pin and we just slide the clevis pin on like that and that's a nice length of blade i always i always like to see the blade just about level or just even just below the the level of the of the lead and that's just about level with it that's a nice 
a nice length of blade for that spinner and you can see how, how freely that spins with the with the little bead on top of the, the cone head there. To finish it off I'm just going to put one more coloured bead, it's a green one in this case, kind of metallic green, just on top of that and that's just for decorative purposes. So that's the, the lure basically assembled and I'm just going to come in and finish it off now and it's exactly the same process as we used to attach the, the hook to the shaft. So I'm going to come in quite close, I only want to leave a few mils really between that top bead and, and where I'm forming this and again it's really important that you hold this as tightly as you possibly can. And exactly the same process as before, I'm going to put a 90 degree bend into that wire and I'm then going to come back over the top when I get to that point, I'm then going to adjust my grip on the pliers and I'm going to put them 90 degrees and that's going to allow me to finish that bend off nice and neat and come up against a flat surface which is going to be the underside of the pliers. Like that. So we have that effect there. Then again, exactly the same as before, holding this tightly. I'm going to come in at the base of that tag end and start wrapping it round that shaft, getting them as neat as possible. Sometimes you'll get a wee rogue bend in it, which doesn't fall quite as nicely as you would like, but just try and compensate for it with the next one. Don't worry too much about it. And two or three turns is plenty on there. I'm just going to straighten that up a little bit. And then come and cut this tag off exactly the same as we did the first time. So as close as I can get in there with the wire cutters. Nice and close. And then holding that tag end tightly with the, the pliers. that right there. That's it. Then. Now this is the, the tag end which is more important to take off um, or to or to get tucked in. Um, you, I, I, I don't know for sure but I've always imagined that you might conceivably cut your line with, with that when the thing's fishing or if you're playing a fish on it and it twists around. So I don't like to leave that, that tag end out. It can be a pain, I think this one is going to be a pain, just looking at it to get it tucked in. But basically you just have to take a good grip on the body, being careful of the hooks obviously, kind of clamping them between your fingers the best you can, and then finding a way with the wire, the, the pliers that that's going to tuck in. And sometimes it goes really easily, and other times Depending on the, the, the cut edge of the wire, how that's sitting, other times it can be an absolute nightmare. But that's just catching there, so that's going to be okay, I think. Just gradually squeeze it in until you're, you're almost finishing off that last wrap and you're just flushing it all down. Like that. And there our finished lure so there's not a lot of movement because we we started that we finished the, the lure off fairly close to that bead there's not a lot of movement um, or, or room for movement between the the hook and the and the eye and that means that your hooks not you know it's not going to slip up and down and it's not going to slide out of the body um, and give you a, a hinging effect it's all going to stay together nicely uh, and that is our black and gold a favourite colour combination for low water for me. Very small, kind of sea trouty, grilsy sized spinner, but so you know, your bigger Sam will happily take them as well. A, a nine pounder on one of these yesterday. Very good lures. Okay, so that's uh, that's that's one way of doing it. That's how I do it. Um, and it's not not the way everybody would do it, but it's just the way it works for me, and I think it gives you a, a really nice, um, well formed. Nicely made lure. Thanks for watching.